Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 22. In this training module, we're going to be exploring fuel injector characterization data and understanding how it fits in into the programming within our Haltech Elite systems. We have a lot to cover. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at understanding our fuel injector characterization basics in this tutorial. Now what we're going to talk about in terms of the concepts can be applied to any fuel injection system. It's not going to be Haltech specific. We need to understand these basic fundamental concepts because it's going to allow us to understand the importance of programming our fuel injector data into our Haltech. We'll take a look at some of the key areas that we need to pay attention to in terms of our programming. Um, we're going to look in the next tutorial of a worked example of taking injector data from a data manufacturer sheet, so something like injector dynamics, and inputting all of that data here to the Haltech. So we properly have entered in the injector information so that the Haltech's understanding how to control that injector. That's essentially what it boils down to. If we have the data input improperly, whether it's going to be a fault of ours by not following along and programming things correctly, or the injector manufacturer giving you bad data, it'll ultimately end up with you not delivering the fuel into the engine properly. They'll be either too rich or too lean condition, and as a result, you'll try to clean up the mess, so to speak, within the main fuel table here, and that's gonna to lead to kind of a cascading effect of absorbing bad data one way or another into your airflow model. So we have both a fuel model and airflow model. We'll discuss that here in just one second. And we wanna go and avoid bringing bad data into our airflow model. Now we're gonna have a separate tutorial talking about dealing with bad injector data and the things to look out for and how to understand how to correct the injector data if it's improperly uh, set up in the file or maybe you don't have injector data for the injectors you're dealing with or the injector manufacturers giving you bad data which is very very common within the aftermarket for injectors because most of the data is incorrect let's just understand the fundamentals here and then we'll get into these specifics later on in other training tutorials so what we have here just very very briefly because we're going to cover this in our volumetric efficiency uh, specific tutorial but we have an airflow and fuel model that's going on in the background with our Haltech. And this is for any airflow-based standalone system or EFI injection system. And that's going to be an equation known as fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. Now in the case here, when we're dealing with a Haltech, the air mass is going to be how much air is coming into our engine. And we'll find in this situation, we need to understand how much airflow is being ingested at any given time so that we can give the proper amount of fuel in relation to that airflow. Now air mass, in the case of dealing with speed density type of tuning, this is a uh, the volumetric efficiency fuel table, this is known as a speed density based tuning. This is an estimation of airflow. If we had a mass airflow, that would be a direct measurement of airflow. We can either estimate the airflow from speed density calculations or we can directly measure the airflow from a mass airflow sensor. So depending on what type of strategy you have your Haltech Elite set up for, that will ultimately determine the amount of air mass coming into the engine. Now, I'm not gonna get into the specifics with that. We'll save that for the specific volumetric efficiency speed density tuning tutorial, but understand that we have to recognize how much air mass is coming into the engine, whether it's estimated or it's measured. The next aspect of that equation is a target air fuel or target lambda table, and that's found right here, and we'll get into this table again, another tutorial, another topic, but this is going to specify what you want at a specific RPM and load reference what you want for a target air fuel, where you want your air fuel to be at. So if we know air mass and we know our target air fuel, simple equation, air mass divided by target air fuel, that will give you, in this case, a fuel mass. The fuel mass is how much fuel we need to deliver into the engine. And that's really important because it's going to be relative to how well our airflow model is configured, how well we've dialed in this table. If we set up our target lambda table, we can specify any target lambda, it doesn't really matter. We ultimately wanna reach that target lambda. So the fuel mass is how much fuel we need to bring into the engine. Now, in this case of fuel mass, this is not going to account for the fuel injector size that we're dealing with. So we need to account for how much flow comes through the injector to be able to scale what's known as the base injector pulse width, or the pulse width that's going to come from that translation of the fuel mass into an injector pulse width. So there's this, this uh, translation that happens. From there, we need to also add additional injector pulse width to compensate for what's known as the latency or the dead time, that's the lag time of the injector turning on and off. And then finally, 
we have short pulse. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.